There's no thingy. What? There's no thingy. There's no icon. The fuck? There was. There was. No, there wasn't. They're lying. No, there wasn't. I'm telling you, there was no thing in front of us. That said Q and A with A and B. Hello, everybody. There. Welcome to Q and A with A and B. I'm Vincent Rackin Yellow, and joining me from New York. And, and why am I not well. side by side with you? You are in the in the in the stream. I'm quite no, sure. No, I'm not. Because I can share, I can see on the bottom. I'm a little square on the bottom, and you're the full picture. All right, let me see if I got anything wrong here. Does anyone see the weirdness? Are we not side by side? Folks, get, let me know in the chat. And there was, no, there was no icon in front of us. I'm telling you. I know that there was none. All right. Well, folks, as you see, I'm not in the usual place. And uh, Should have so. done a test run like I always tell you. <laughs> what do you see, folks? Do you see two of us next to each other? We're live. You're side by side. So according to uh, the people... We are side by side. I don't know. It's not that way on this screen. Don't worry about it. Anyway, well, I'm, I, I'm away for a few days. Hello, Amy. How are you? Fine. <laughs> Welcome to Wednesday night. And we're talking about viruses tonight. And the... the um, Continuing narrative is booster, third shot. I don't you know, like the word narrative. Don't use it again, please. Okay. So you know what I heard today, Amy, that some people are calling it a third shot, but if you're immunocompromised, then they call it a booster. What do you think what? about that? What? <laughs> if what? You're, if you're immunocompromised. I heard. I, I'm just trying to process like right, this well, ridiculousness. What? Yeah, well. Yeah, I do need a drink. I need more wine. Does someone want you uh, to have a drink? Yeah, some J9 says, Amy needs a drink, laugh out loud. I'm like, I need more wine. Um, uh, I just don't understand why we are um, why we're changing the lingo. Like, I just don't understand. Well, that's what they're doing. Well, it's ridiculous. All right, let's do some Q and A. Our N95 respirator is still the gold standard. No, depends what you want to do. The N95 will protect you very well, not necessarily others. But I wear a surgical mask or a cloth mask, and uh, those are also good for protecting you and others. And Amy wears a cloth mask, right? Well, actually, you wear a surgical mask, right? Yeah, I wear a surgical mask. Yeah. Um, an ending D5 could be the best. I mean, it's got it's got a charge to it. It's got an ionic charge to it. So it could be fine. Would we see enhanced disease with SARS-CoV-2 and RSV or influenza A virus co-infection? Not necessarily. It really depends. What, what happens to the epitopes presented when a cell is co-infected? The epitopes are co-presented. Equal epitope presentation. But you don't necessarily have to have more severe disease. Hello, Frank and Vanity Nutrition. Thanks uh, for coming back again. Yep. What it's do good. I think about the doctor in Michigan pushing misinformation during a hearing? You know what Who's this Dr. is about. Michigan. Doctor in Michigan. I don't know anything about it, but I'm not surprised because it's happening all the time. Happening all the time. So New Zealand is still in lockdown. How many cases do you have? Not too many, right? They go into lockdown when there's one one or two cases. I don't <laughs> think that they I don't think that they're vaccinating as efficiently as they could. Yeah. I don't think Australia is vaccinating as efficiently as they could either. 
I wasn't, uh, yeah, I wasn't on early tonight because uh, I, I only have one little laptop here and I didn't even know if it could handle it, but it seems to be okay. Hypothetically, if 100% of the world would be vaccinated with the mRNA vaccines, would transmissions eventually stop completely? Would R0 permanently be below one? 100%. What do you think, Amy? Probably. I don't think transmission ever stops completely, but it's controllable because you're always going to have some immune compromised person and stuff who's going to shed virus, even if they're asymptomatic. Right. It's kind of like polio. So I don't think that, yeah. After the last twiv moving to support third shot, mainly for short-term benefits for the unvaccinated. High temporary antibodies, less infection and transmission. Okay, so Sheldon, are you going to get a, a a third and a fourth and a fifth and a sixth shot every six, eight months? I don't think that's a tenable public health policy. And uh, so it may be fine. I for, think it's greedy. You. Yeah. Because while this 200 million isn't going to make a dent in the amount that needs to go to the globe, if we then multiply it by five, it does. And so yeah, yeah. it's far more important that we vaccinate countries like Indonesia and Bangladesh and Vietnam and all these other places than give Americans a third booster because we interpreted the data improperly led by another country who also interpreted the data improperly. Also this, good. Is, this is an interesting one. Are unvaccinated people the primary driver of mostly mild disease in the vaccinated? What I is would, that? I would say they're, exactly. they're the ones transmitting, right, Amy? The unvaccinated. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They absolutely are. Yeah. So if we had 80, 90 percent of the U.S. vaccinated, would not be an issue. I heard someone say if we only had to deal with COVID in, in vaccinated people, it would be easy because they don't get very sick. Right. Dr. Poland of the Mayo Clinic concludes that the Delta variant is more transmissible. Why do respected virologists have such differing opinions? Well, Dr. Poland hasn't looked at the data. He's just, he or she is just repeating uh, what they have heard. And if you look at the data, then you are not so quick to make that conclusion. Yeah. Oh, here you go. Vincent and Amy, and it, is a career in science a wise decision? It seems very competitive and the pay is not great. <laughs> what do you think, Amy? Uh, well, if you're only concerned about pay, then this, then it's not really a career. It's just a job. A career is something that kind of engulfs you. Um, or at least that's what I think. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, so it's like talking to my sisters who are bankers. Yeah, I could go to a pharmaceutical company or biotech and I could probably make, I don't know, five to 10 times the amount of money that you pay me or whatever. Um, but I don't want to do that. Um, and it depends on how you want to do science. Like today, my technician told me she wants to do science, not in a lab, but in public health, which I think is very rewarding. So I think it all depends on what you want to do. I don't regret it. I, as Amy said, it's a, it's a career. It's a love. It's a passion. Never cared about the money. I care about science. Yeah. I mean, I just care to have enough to do the experiments that I want to do and have a few more people to come and do projects that I'm interested in. But uh, I don't have, it's not feasible because I don't have the manpower or the time to do them by myself. It's not for everyone, Powell, right? Because it's Oh, for job. sure not. So For sure not. It's, that's why it's tough and only people who really want it should apply for sure. Otherwise, yeah. you'll be disappointed. 
Well, there's always the other thing is, is all the way to get here. Like mm -hmm. I laugh that you have to like, when you apply for jobs sometimes, or you're in the running or you're about to get the job, they say to you, can you provide a transcript in your copy of your diploma? And I just want to be like, if you know how hard it is to get these things, I'm calling myself a PhD. I'm not like going to about, lie about it. But there's always that defining moment, right? Yeah, and sometimes yeah. that defining moment could be years. It's a good question. Oh, look, Vanity Nutrition is joining from 30,000 feet. Cool. Maybe right. that's our first uh, mile higher, or more than mile high, right? 5,280. Yeah. It's six miles. Cool. Yep. Cool. Great. Have a, is the connection good? I guess and, so. Uh, Amy, can the hawks see the mice through the lab windows? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, there were no mice in the lab. They're in their special rooms. Yeah. It, there are no windows in those rooms, right? No. Well, some oh, of the rooms are barriered in concrete. Yeah, the, and the hawks would, if they could see them, they would be salivating, right? Yeah. Now, Westfield is frustrated by media, government, and even scientists not understanding immunity. All I hear is vaccines are not effective since antibodies have waned and, tr and thus boosters need to keep antibodies. Yes, that's what we are saying all the time uh, here on Q&A, on TWIV, over and over. Someone sent me an article by our favorite New York Times science writer, and I won't mention the name, saying- Well, I have two. <laughs> I, I think there are two that are of equal, of equal competence. <laughs> so the article concludes, vaccines are waning, we're in trouble. But for, for, and then at the same time, the CDC last week, of course, points out two studies which show that vaccine efficacy against severe disease and death has not changed. It's still very high. So go figure. Yeah, I agree with you. We agree with you. Westfield. Westfield. Well, the problem is, is they're trying, they're, they're walking both sides of the line yeah. and they are very confused. And so therefore they give this confused message and people think that when you're infected, it's the, it's the same thing as you have disease and that's not true. Yeah. And they can't figure out how to get out of their own way and try and not have that connection. But since they screwed it up at the beginning, it's always going to stay. Oh, by the way, Amy, the other news today is the Biden report concluded nothing <laughs> about the origin oh my of God. COV2. <laughs> oh, my God. Really? Isn't that, no aren't way. You shocked? Aren't you shocked, Amy? Oh my God. Yeah, I know. It's, no it's, way. It's, it's incredible. I think if you go back Holy three months. Trivoli. So he, he commissioned this report, investigate the origins of SARS CoV 2 three months ago. And Amy and I here, if you go back, you will hear us say they're not going to learn anything because you need to do science to learn the origins, not, not spying. Oh well. Well, oh, well. you I sent you the das, the, the Koopman Dasak. Uh, yes thing from nature yeah and it, they, know, they say that it's just wasting time we're just wasting you know, time you know what kills me the reports the the press will say oh the who committee was not transparent blah 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 they came on twiv and they were totally transparent forget it folks no <laughs> i don't think that they said the committee wasn't transparent i think that they said that china wasn't transparent and therefore the committee was flawed because it was just at the puppeteering of the Chinese government because yes. they had to have a section of questions that was agreed upon and blah, blah, blah. But um, Koopman is right. We're wasting time. And the longer it goes, the harder it's going to be to find, especially if you don't, if you only focus in on where uh, the first cases were. So that's like if we focused in where the first cases of HIV that really came to prominence were they were in LA. So if we went to Orange County and then we went to Beverly Hills and I don't know, Santa Barbara, lo and behold, we would have never have found the origin. Yeah, that's right. But I, I, hey, <laughs> why, not, why not go and where, I don't know. It's not even, what's the opposite of binoculars? Monoculars. Uh, it's not the opposite, really. It's but. not really the opposite. 
Anyway, here's a good one. Do you think a, a computer models will ever be able to replace the predictive nature of in vivo, in vitro serial passage? No. I knew Amy would say no. <laughs> no way in hell. I think it's the, the mutational possibility is so huge and you don't know which. So right now we have no idea how to program those predictive models. So no, I don't think it's going to be a long time. I'll be going gone. It's never going to, it's never going to happen. Really? Nope. Okay. Nope. Cause do you understand how the polymerase makes mistakes? Do you understand what makes it a recombination hotspot? No, I, I do don't. Do you understand what no. makes a slippery sequence? Please. I mean, I was a graduate student. We're still trying to figure out how a stem loop, a frame shift works. Yeah, it's very complicated and not just complicated, but involved. And people are figuring it out. We don't have enough money. That's the problem. I think most scientists thought this would over be over by now. I don't know. What about you, Amy? Did you think it would be over by now, the pandemic? No. Yeah, I did. I thought it would be over. I said five years. I said wow. five years. Wow. Uh, said five happened? years at the very beginning. I said it, it took five years to control the 1918 flu with bigger outbreaks and our hubris is going to get in the way and it's going to take us five years if we're lucky. So places like the U.S. where we have a, a surplus of vaccine, I'm surprised that only 50 some percent of the U.S. got vaccinated. I thought it would be 70 to 80. And in the rest Seriously? of the world. I did. I did. I was very naive. Seriously? Very naive. Sorry, I apologize deeply. I was very naive. You don't need to apologize. I'm just astonished. And then the rest of the world, of course, doesn't have vaccine. Most of the rest of the world. And so that's another stunner, although that could have been predicted. So that's why we were we are where we are. So Amy said it here, five years. Have a way yeah, to go. Yeah, I said it at the very beginning. We're at the end of year two. And uh, this guy of Global Health, um, who's British. Yeah. Um, who I think you should have on TWIV with Daniel and the other lady or whoever you were going to have with Global Health. Um, he comes out and he says, like, it's a bigger fire today than it was in 2020. It's a, yeah. Nope. Five years. If we're lucky. Oh, what do you think about the Pfizer CEO saying there will be a variant that evades vaccines? They'll be able to sell you a new vaccine for this variant after 95 days. So I got a email about this from a publicist who said ceo whatever his name is i'm a, i am here to set up an interview with him if you would like <laughs> this is bs especially if you listen to last week's twiv where it's really hard to make a variant that's resistant to all uh, known antibodies in sera for example the, the virus is not very fit would never compete and uh, so I don't, anyway, this all is myopic because it ignores the role of T cells, right? And so what? Well, yeah, it, it ignores the role of T cells and it ignores a ton of other stuff outside of the fact that um, there is, yeah, it ignores like the fact that the virus, there's a ton of mutations already that make the virus lethal. They don't bind to receptor. They bind too tight. They bind too loosely. They don't uncoat properly. They just barf out the whole genome all at once. They don't replicate properly. They don't encapsulate properly. Blah, blah, blah. No. He should go and take a virology I think, course. I, I think, back uh, his, or just practice veterinary medicine. No, they want to sell Amy. I think they should I sell understand what they want to do, but it's... They egregious should, they should sell monthly subscriptions to their vaccine just like software we said that last week yeah i think i said that last week but the end of the day is it's egregious that he's vocalizing such ignorance yeah are we surprised amy no but at some point i would like to be i would like them to hire a filter who makes sure that what they say is scientifically accurate not just, you know, grammatically correct. All right. I want to discuss this little comment for a few minutes. We need better therapies with non-sterilizing vaccines. The virus is here to stay. What's wrong with that statement, Amy? Well, when you read it so fast, 
to like, I could only focus on the end, which was something about non-sterilizing vaccines, the virus is here to stay. Almost every single vaccine by HPV is non-sterilizing and we're perfectly fine. If this were like polio, if this were flu, if this were measles, there would be no question, we'd be fine. So you're not seeing the comments, Amy? No, they scrolled too, no, I don't really see them. Because I if, don't know. Something's wrong. We can fix it next week. I'll see you Friday. We can fix it then. Okay, we can fix it then. But many vaccines are not sterilizing. and well, All of them, but HPV. And, and polio vaccine, well, it's not sterilizing, and we're about to eradicate polio. So I don't think it has to do with sterilization, OB. Not sterilization in that sense, but sterilizing in, in the sense of no, it doesn't infection. have to do with sterilizing immunity. Yep. Uh, have you seen any compelling data that would make you think Delta is more transmissible or would require a booster? So no, no, we haven't. The booster for sure not, because all the vaccines prevent serious disease and hospitalization and death. At, to a high extent, and that's what the vaccines were designed for. And Didn't I just send you a paper from John Wary's group with the guy who was a, a surf student the last summer that Schindler was here, this guy Rishi? And they look, I believe, at Delta and all the variants, and they don't really see any difference. You sent it to me? Yeah, it was like Monday morning at like, that's I That's right, know, you five. did. 5 30 yeah. in the morning yeah the kid the first author is an he went to michigan he was an M, he's an md or a medical student but he was here as an amgen scholar floundering around with schindler and stuff so if uh you listen to the uh shaman episode of twiv a couple of weeks ago you will learn that most of the information on transmission comes from modeling statistical models and from a virology viewpoint, Amy and I would like to see experiments done that would be consistent with an increased transmissibility. Right now, all we can say is that the virus is more fit, and that's why it displaced others. Well, models like are, are wrong, usually. There's some, a lot of wrong models. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Some are useful, right? Yeah, some are useful, but you have to know how to discern. Are you or your colleagues considering serving on the WHO Scientific Advisory Group for the Origins of Novel Pathogens? What is, it, what is this, Amy? I didn't know that they were having a origin of novel pathogen discovery group. Could be cool. I'm all for it. I mean, I think, uh, Ian I... wants to have a meeting about emerging pathogens. That's what he does. The yeah, Wednesday I... morning thing. Uh I think, Amy, you should be on this committee. That would be fabulous. I would love it. I think it would be really interesting. I mean, I can't wait for Ian's meetings to show up and for us to finally get some money so we can sequence the mice tracheas and lungs that are sitting in the mm -hmm. freezer. But I also would have liked to have had the gut. I mean, I think that there are a lot of interesting things from the gut. Israeli low effectiveness data. Is this a data artifact? Well, low effectiveness against what? You always have to ask, what are you talking about? And it is simply against, in PCR positivity, hospitalization, severe disease is still very high. So that's just bad reporting. It's not any paradox caused by Simpson or any others. <laughs> Well, it also is a single snapshot, so I don't even know what it means. Like, is it the day you got infected? I don't really know. Because if you did a time course, you would find, okay, fine, I have, you know, CT, what, of 18 on day one. And by day two, I have CT of 37. What's the problem? Right. There isn't, there isn't a problem. Okay. How is the incubator going? Oh, uh, well, last Friday, I... I went and picked up a vacuum cleaner. 
<laughs> it's really exciting. <laughs> hey, it is. I've been waiting for the vacuum. We talked about it last week when you said you had big news and my and it was about Max Friedman. Why I thought it should have been about the vacuum cleaner. So I, I haven't put expensive equipment in the studio yet because I'm waiting for the doors to be secured. So last week we actually got a, a deadbolt. I'm waiting for the other door. So there's a second door that's supposed the handle is taken off. And it's supposed to be dead bolted. Well, then, the handle was supposed to be put back on when you went Friday evening. Yeah, it was. It wasn't. But that's what I'm waiting it for. It wasn't? The handle was not put back. What are you talking about? The main door or the other door? No, the, you showed me a dead bolt on one and then another door that was handleless. And that handle yeah. was supposed to be replaced by Friday evening. No, it was supposed to be covered over with a plate. And then a lock would be put on the inside of the door so no one could get in. So I'm waiting Fine, for whatever. that. But if that as soon as that happens, then I buy equipment and I can start recording there. I have to soundproof it, so I haven't done that yet. But uh, we're getting there. But the vacuum cleaner I had to pick up because the first one they delivered was broken. I had to send it back. So I actually went to Bed Bath & Beyond on 18th Street, and I walked back with this 40-pound vacuum. I almost died. 90-degree <laughs> <laughs> heat, but there you go. Not a lot of stuff, but... Well, vacuum cleaners are very important. It could be why I come to the incubator. It could be the highlight of my visit. Who knows? Yeah, well, the vacuum cleaner has to be used. That's for sure. Okay, let's see. Uh, went and did antibody tests after my 10-plus close contact exposures. Negative on antibodies. I found out four days later I was exposed. PCR negative for the 11th time. Well, you're not hitting people who are transmitting. That's it. Not everyone transmits. 80% of transmissions are by 20% of people. So you're just lucky, Corey. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone now I'm getting to, uh, Amy is perturbed. <laughs> uh, the blue glasses are, I'm not home tonight. That's why. Anyone see Paul Offit? I didn't, but I did get an email from Paul Offit last week. Yeah, who, who says said, we're right. He says, we're right about not needing a third shot. He said, my blog post of last week was spot on. It's cool. Yeah. It's good I think to be it's right. It's great. Yes. Um, Amy uses that word, squishy. Yeah, right? Squishy? Yeah. Uh, sure. See, Amy looks good here. You are side by side. Everything is good. It must be your end, Amy. We'll fix it. How's that? And we'll fix it. It's fine. I'm probably. <laughs> that was a lot of comments on that. Okay. Oh, look, Vanity is going from New York to L.A. Wow. That's a long flight. And and you're still listening, huh? Cool. A lot of well, what else is there to do in a, at when you're a captive in the air? <laughs> How many times well, can you watch Crazy Rich Asians? Well, she has work to do. She's working. You know, but and apparently okay. listening, it's really good. I, it's, I guess you can listen to a live stream up there. Although one of the things when you sign up for for Wi-Fi, they say no live streaming. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. I haven't been on a plane in years. Here's a question for you, Amy. As a well-read scientist, which paper related to the virus would you nominate for the Ig Nobel, Ig Nobel Prize? You know those Ig Nobels, Amy? No. Well, it, you know, the ones that, that are given for really poor work or, you know, funny, useless. You don't know them. Okay. So Amy can't answer because. There's too many to choose from. Amy is, is quite critical. Yeah, there's too many to choose from. Now, if you were to have a reverse question, it would be like five. Found out my cousin was infected, fully vaccinated, took his child to college, not mask. Can he receive a MAB? So Daniel would say, and we had this question last week, if he's in a high risk group, yes. But if not, then no. Is Amy writing a new grant? I'm writing <laughs> a paper and writing, writing a, a new grant. Yes, I'm writing, writing both. It's, it's writing a paper, yeah. yeah. And a grant. 
you say that memory B and T cells are capable of generating antibodies after a few days of virus entering. Is this time critical and determinant that we can some write it out and others can't? Well, it's critical, yeah. So if you're a little delayed, you're going to have more of a severe infection, right? And some people may not be as good at responding quickly as others. It's not genetically determined. So it's yeah, also age-determined. Also age-determined, yeah. Uh, when this virus becomes endemic, will it ever be less transmissible than it is now? Unless it does become less contagious, I don't see how we can say eventually it'll turn into a common cold corona. Why? A, a common cold coronas, why do you think they're, they're transmissible? Less... Of course they're, they are. They just, don't, they just don't cause disease. They're yeah. fully, they get fully, you get fully infected. I don't understand the question. The question is wrong. Yeah, they're not going to be less transmissible, Russia. It's just a matter of disease and population immunity. That's it. Because cold, common cold viruses are quite transmissible. That's why they infect everyone, as Amy well knows. She yeah. uh, studies them. Yeah, I do. Um, I don't. Un I also don't understand what the correlation between transmissibility is and cause disease. They're two very yeah. different traits. Two different things. Yeah. All right. Um, can this is hysterical. Viruses? What? This guy wrote, I'd rather listen to my ex-wife than Peter Hotez. That's hysterical. <laughs> That's very good. That this is, is really, hysterical. That's really good. I like that. It's okay. You made Amy laugh. Look at that. I mean, just think about it. Oh, my God. That's hysterical. Can two viruses infect the same cell? Absolutely. Absolutely. No, nothing's stopping them. Right, Amy? Right. Oh, the golf grouch. What's the origination of the term breakthrough infection? Is it a real scientific term? What do you, what do you think, Amy? What's the origin? I don't know what the origin is. And if it is a real scientific term, it should be removed from the lexicon. It's horrible. It's a horrible term. It's 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 wrong. Yeah. It's just wrong. And actually, I don't think I've ever heard of heard about it. Like when we talk about VAP and stuff, that's a, a clearly has to be. You had to have gotten you know disease from you know from reinfection. So yeah, it's, I. Yeah, I so don't, it's... I've never heard, you don't even hear about it when you talk about flu and people say, oh, I was vaccinated, but I still came down with the flu because the flu was a horrible season. Don't hear about it at all. So I don't know where this term came from, but it's horrible. It Someone be mentioned it to a writer somewhere and it got amplified and that's the end of it. And we'll never see the end of it. Um, what, what did I want to say? Okay, here. My cat got three vaccines. The vet prepared three different needles from three vials. Why not prepare one big from three? What could go wrong? Or why does this need testing? Oh, you don't want to put a, a take a needle that you've pulled out of one vial and put it into another one. That's how you would contaminate the other. Yeah, why vaccine. would I do that? That's so that's why good. that's why you have to go in with separate needles. Never go back in a vial with a used needle. Nope. The blue surgical masks are only 10% of effective according to some study. Well, next time you have surgery and everybody's wearing a blue surgical mask, tell them that. Tell them, hey, did you know those are only 10% effective? And, and they'll laugh. Because yeah. it depends on the study. Hey. What do you think about the theory of antibody enhancement with the Delta variant, Amy? What? I heard the question. It's just so ludicrous. No. There's no evidence for that. No. I've had, not at all. No. Amy, will you still be on live shows or podcasts with your new job? Well, when I get a new job, sure. But I don't have a new job. <laughs> to get a new job, you have to apply. I have to finish some stuff before I send in my application. I'm sure Amy would love to continue her communication after wherever it is she goes sure right amy for sure why would i why would i drop out 
It's fine. But I don't have a new job, so we don't need to worry quite yet. Ralph says, I finally got my answer from CDC about mRNA vaccine on top of J&J. &J. No, but it probably will be needed. Brilliantly clear communication. Well, that's, I think Amy would agree with you. What brilliant communications! Out of the CDC, yes, they get a, they get they get an A plus plus in their clear manner of communicating in a trust giving people oh so confidence. Amy, does the mRNA vaccine code for the whole spike? Yes, you bet. Can T cells developed after taking the vaccine be tested with the adaptive test used for T cell acquired through infection? No. So, uh, no, they only look for nucleocapsid antigens. Yeah, they, they only see if they respond to antigens. They don't do adoptive assays, as you're suggesting. No, the T cell commercial test only looks for nucleic nucleocapsid peptides, antigen, right? you know, yeah. peptides. Yeah, it does so not look for spikes. So therefore, you cannot. They're fine if you want if you were naturally infected, but if you are only getting the vaccine. It doesn't encode yeah, for nucleocapsid, right. so it doesn't. Right. It's not of any use. Amy, how do they do that? They they have nucleocapsid peptides. They throw in with the T cells and see if they respond. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they assess. Morris, yeah. thank you for your contribution. Michael Minna said in a recent interview that the next variants will be worse because Delta is now the baseline. All the lineages will derive from it. Uh, well, I, we disagree respectfully, right, Amy? We disagree. Respectfully is questionable. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so we don't. We we're not clear. He, yeah, we're not clear. No, I just don't see why you could say that. Why you the can. experience will be worse? You have no idea what the trajectory of evolution is. Absolutely none. And if Michael knows, well, he better tell us how he knows. Well, if he knows, he should get off his off the pot and do something. Should we have him back on TWIV, Amy? No. To explain, to explain what happened? No? Sure. He could come in and explain it. I mean, basically, it's explained by the by Rich Condit's good friend, F. Fisher, who said, not possible because at that point, and even today, not possible because you don't have a high enough affinity antibody. Right. Which is not so, trivial, right, Amy? No, it's not trivial. I spend a lot of time pulling my hair out and screaming at you because we don't have a high enough affinity antibody yet, right? Amy doesn't just yell at me on live streams. It's <laughs> in the lab too. It's okay. It's I don't really persona. yell at I don't really yell at people. I just get frustrated. As a vaccinated person, and we both can answer this, how worried are you about COVID for your personal health? Amy, can you answer how worried are you? Um, on a scale of one to five, one to 10. Yeah. Maybe a five, but I'm, you know, in flu season, I'm at the same level of a five for getting, you know, severe flu. You have to remember folks, Amy is in her twenties, so she's not at high risk for severe disease. Whereas I'm, I'm in my sixties. I'm not quite in my twenties, but, but I'm not I'm worried. Not uh, I have always been careful. I don't hang out with a lot of people. I wear a mask because I have to most of the time to go to Columbia, to go on the subway, to go on the train. When I go to stores, I wear a mask. Why? Because as Daniel Griffin said, I don't want any kind of COVID. If I can prevent it, why not? Well, not only that, but when you're in a store or you're on a train, I don't know if there are kids around and stuff, and I would not want someone to make my niece and my cousin's sick, right? Not my niece and nephews, but my godson who's 15 and his sister who's 10. I wouldn't right. want them to be sick. Yep. So it's just out of courteous and respect for my my fellow American or whoever else is on the train or in the air or in the store with me. So last week I flew to Austin, right? If I were really Should have been wearing a mask. I, di I did on the plane. On the plane and in the in the thingamabobber, the no, lounge. But the lounge, yeah, everywhere. I always wear a mask, absolutely. 
Thank you, Rob, for your contribution to the incubator. Really appreciate it. Would an mRNA vaccine present better T-cell epitopes for a future flu vaccine than the current efforts? Isn't that what Fouché said, Amy? He said that he thought the T-cell presentation could be improved for the flu vaccines. Yeah, but not because it was mRNA. He thinks it should yeah. be adjuvanted. Yeah. It, it, Which was kind of yeah. surprising because I believe he's in Europe and I believe that the argument that Rafi made about why there's crappy, uh, there's no memory B cells in the American population for who get the flu vaccine is that mm. it's not adjuvanted. Right. Right. Yeah. So there's something, so maybe it's the wrong adjuvant. Maybe if we did different adjuvants, yeah, you it would try. Be, yeah, it would be different, but I think he, I think Fouché kind of misspoke when he said that that vaccine wasn't adjuvanted. Uh, my best friend's father cut his hand on a rusty boat, got a tetanus shot, and second COVID on the same day developed acute transverse myelitis. Is this common? Um, we've never seen any transverse myelitis with the COVID vaccine, I believe that it is a very small percentage of people who get the tetanus shot. Hmm. Okay. I'm one in rare few that had a reaction to Pfizer, hives and tingling in the feet that comes and goes, couldn't get a second dose. How at risk am I? Well, how at risk are you after one dose of Pfizer, Amy? I don't know because we didn't really follow up and uh, it depends on how long he's been, you know, it's been and stuff. So you, you could, so the problem is in the you clinical get, trial, they only went up to the second dose with first. And then we don't know if you just got one dose, how you would be, but the protection after one dose in just three or four weeks is low. It's 60% against COVID, right? So we don't know if you had not against gotten severe second. disease. Yeah. So, I don't know if you just let it go, what the efficacy would be, but I think it would be lower than getting two doses. Most likely. I'm not sure. You're not sure? No. Well, yeah, because yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, my advice would be to be careful, David, wear a mask, stay distant from people. You know, don't go to crowded places if you can avoid it. Yeah. And maybe, so if you got it from Pfizer, you could try, I don't know, maybe Johnson Johnson. It's a totally, there's no lipid droplet, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Will any intact spike make it out of cells that make the vaccine spike protein or will all of it be processed for antigen presentation? I would assume some, a small percentage makes it out. Yeah, small, very small, probably. Cells could die, they could release it, yeah. <laughs> Remember, it's a membrane-bound protein. Things cut off cytoplasmic tails all the time. Kind of not like polio. What do you mean, Michael? It's kind of not like polio. Are you are you saying this to two people who have worked on polio for a combined 60 years? You think we know it's kind of not like polio? We're using polio as an example? Come on. Yeah, I said something about, like, you know, how, about transmission or something or other, and I was, yeah. It's all I mean, about understand. principles. It's all about principles. Exactly. Micah. You have to understand you can, t you can apply the same fundamental principles. You don't focus so much on the details. Could a vaccinated person not be infectious if showing disease? Sure. Disease could be after you, you get, after you're not infectious. There are many times. Yeah. That so, uh, so after you finish shedding and you have an yeah. inflammatory disease long longer term yeah for sure yeah i don't know what this is can you comment on phenofibrate for mild to moderate covid to limit lipid particles i don't know i don't know what it. that means. i don't know what that is i don't know i watched last week's q a 66 year olds had the last pfizer shot in january Thought it would be prudent to check my antibodies. It came back over 20. Amy, what's the antibody test looking at? Spike and nucleocapsid? Just spike. Just spike. All of them are just spike? Yeah, basically. 
Well, it depends on what the test is. I mean, if you're vaccinated, they're just going to do a spiked antibody test. If you think you've been infected, they'll do a test that also looks at nucleic acid. But so mm. it just depends on what situation you're in. I don't know what the 20 is. And, you know, we are used to having dilutions and I don't know how that relates. I'd have to go look at what test you had and try and figure out what that means. But you have antibodies, obviously. And if that's. Yeah, I don't know what it means. And I don't know. So I don't know really what total antibody level means, to be honest, because we've seen in our studies where you have a high level of antibodies that interact with a virus and the virus is not mm. neutralized, but that there's taking that same serum and looking at some other virus that interacts less well is mm -hmm. neutralized. So I don't know what, a t I don't know a total number of antibodies actually means anyway, because I don't care about the total number of antibodies. You could have 400 antibodies and 2% be neutralizing. Not so good. You could have 20 and 19 of them being neutralized. Much better. Do cells containing mRNA from vaccines pass it on when they divide? They don't divide. They're terminally differentiated cells. These, what are, what are they, muscle cells? Mm-hmm. And also the APCs, they don't divide, right? Right. All right, it's A45, like three more. How many BSL-3 labs are there compared to two? I, think I would over say in a ratio, one to, th one to three. Yeah, the three. I think there are several thousand BSL-3s. Now, if you wanted to do BSL-4, there are even less. I don't but know that there are several thousand. I just looked it up. Oh. They're more common than four. Will this change? Probably, right? Do you think they'll go up, Amy? No. It's too expensive. Hmm. All right. Let's find another question for Amy. Here. My husband is a high school teacher, and we have two young kids. One of his students, he was notified the day after that she tested positive. What protocol for testing should he follow? Get tested every what? day. Get tested every day. Uh, go to a quick PCR or get a home antigen test. Well, no, okay. don't go to – no, just like they go, there are free testing sites in the city. So just go there. Well, they may not be in the city. They may be somewhere. Well, I'm sure there are, there are free testing sites in other places. But get tested as soon as you can, and if it's negative, wait a day or two and get tested again. And if you have a series of negatives, then you, you weren't infected. Is that correct, Amy? Yeah, because you're like about four days behind. The delay is, yeah, about four days. Okay, here's the last one for Amy. First timer here for your Q&A. Welcome. Has Thanks any other disease causing virus mutated as much as SARS-CoV-2? And if yes, how efficient have vaccines been as slowing or stopping the mutation? Go ahead, Amy. <laughs> well, every, every virus has an inherent mutation rate. Um, I'm not sure that SARS-CoV-2 mutation rate is any different than other coronas, right? Yeah. And I don't know off the top of my head how it relates to like polio. Polio and coronavirus polymerases are very fast and they make a lot of mistakes. And what was it about the vaccine? How efficient have vaccines been slowing or stopping the mutation for other fast mutating viruses? Well, they don't stop mutation. They prevent selection, but they don't stop mutation. Right. So I don't really, I mean, the mutation rate is inherent. It doesn't matter if you're, yeah. It's only going to stop um, selection of that one. All right. Thank you, Amy. My pleasure. Okay. Uh, Going to see you Friday, right? Yeah, the CO2 ran out. All right. Too. I'll change it Friday. Should be okay right. till then. Yeah. That'll be good. All right. Bye. Have a good evening. You Bye. Too. Okay. Uh, Gamalaya started trials of combined flu and COVID. Any thoughts? I think it's a good idea.
because they're going to be circulating in temperate climates in the same season, right? The winter season in a temperate climate, you're going to have outbreaks of flu and COVID. So I think it's good to combine the two vaccines. A lot of people go to get their flu shot in the fall, and why not combine it with COVID if we need to be doing that? Or at least encouraging more people to get vaccinated, right? Is anyone keeping data about how many who are infected with Delta have been previously infected? Yeah, to, to some extent, this is being collected for sure. Um, and I suspect we're going to be seeing this rather soon. I haven't seen it yet. Or eat a lab leak. <clears throat> Ebrecht claimed the Wuhan Institute of Virology used seamless ligation procedures that leave no signatures. This is BS, okay? <laughs> this is the purest BS because Ebright figures nobody's going to understand what he's saying. I can't believe it. This is meaningless. Seamless. Amy didn't have any interviews yet. Sorry. <coughs> she didn't go on an interview yet. I heard they were going to make the booster include newer variants. What happened? <coughs> well, um, I don't really know because I'm not privy to the testing, but uh, I know that only the alpha variant has been really tested in in a, in a short phase one. But I don't think you need to include changes in new variants in whatever you decide to give people. Because with time, the immune response broadens to include more variants. And so the best example is if you've recovered from infection and then you get a vaccine, you have now an incredibly broad antibody response, which will neutralize any variant, then plus a lot of other coronaviruses as well. So I don't think you need to make new vaccines. But again, this whole story is ignoring the role of T-cells. The reason we are protected against severe disease and death is because the T-cell epitopes are not changing. Constant narrative, and I'm sorry to use that word, but that's what it is. Constant narrative about antibody levels declining. For the most part, we don't even know if it matters because you're still protected against serious disease. And I remind you that in all the uh, phase three trials, after that first shot, at about day 11, you started to see protection against COVID at a time when there was no neutralizing antibody in the serum detectable. Why were they protected? Because of T cells. Everyone's ignoring this. The T cell epitopes don't change. I don't understand why. Is it that difficult to understand? <clears throat> Could mRNA vaccine create better immunity versus natural infection because of the glycans? Well, they, the, the glycans are on both, right? They're on the virus and the mRNA vaccine. So, so create better immunity isn't entirely true. It depends what the situation is. If you have recovered from infection and then you get one dose of vaccine, you get better immunity than if you got two doses of vaccines. Okay, so not a correct statement. <clears throat> Do you think the Delta story is more of an issue scaring the public to raise vaccination rates? No, I don't think so. I think the way the story has been told, it is definitely scary. I think that's in part because many spokespersons, both scientists and public health people, are not thinking carefully about what they're saying, and the press is amplifying it. You know, for example, the New York Times ran a story this week. Vaccine efficacy is waning. It's a big problem. Really? Is that why we're still over 90% protected against hospitalization? Because it's waning? See, they don't understand the nuance, and it gets people really scared. A lot of people are afraid to go out there, for sure. <clears throat> uh, we've we need 10 million doses in New Zealand. We've received 3 million. We will have most of what we need to offer two doses after October. That's great. 
I think that's terrific. I'm glad you're able to do that down there. And in Australia, vaccination in New South Wales has gone from 12 to 60 percent. That's great. Con many countries are able to get a lot of people vaccinated. Here in the U.S., we have problems. It's highly unfortunate, right? Excellent. Isn't teaching like I do better pay, more satisfaction? So let, let me say that here's the story. I'm at a medical school where my primary job is not to teach. It's to do research, to raise money on grants, to pay for most of my lab and not really do any teaching. I mean, I always done what I've been asked because I love teaching, but it's not part of my job. Now, if I were at a, say, undergraduate, primarily undergraduate institution or a not a medical school, say, I would have 10 months of my salary paid except for two months in the summer, right, where you're technically not teaching because the 10 months pays for you to teach at least one and usually more courses. That's the big difference between a medical school and, and a not, which is not to say that you can't do research in a not medical school. You can, but now you have 10 months of your salary paid, whereas I may have two months of my salary paid. And so I have to raise more on my grants. It's really harder to do. Um, more satisfaction. I find both teaching and research equally satisfying. Um, maybe teaching a little more because I can really influence a lot of people. But I didn't go to a medical school to teach. I just went there to do research because it's a good environment for that. But I found that I like teaching. Maybe that helps. Do you think flu shots and other vaccines provide a boost in immunity, which can help against COVID? Well, um, you know, early on last year in this pandemic, uh, the theory was brought forth that Infectious, replication-competent vaccines like polio vaccines, MMWR, <laughs> MMWR, MMR vaccine, <laughs> uh, could give you a couple months boost in general immunity of some kind, which would reduce infections. And there were some trials planned to address that. I don't really know what came of them. But it's not every vaccine. It has to be an infectious, replication-competent vaccine. Thank you, Abraham, for your contribution. Yeah, I think zero COVID is not happening. The world is too diverse, but controlling it, it will happen for sure. And you're, yes, come see us at the incubator. We'll have possibly uh, room for people to sit and watch us. Is there evidence of non-pharmacologic interventions working to control community spread against Delta? I don't think the game has changed. A lot of people are saying because of its properties, uh, these things are not working. I don't see any evidence for that. They still work. In fact, the vaccines still work. So the only thing that's changed, in my opinion, is that it is it has displaced previous variants. Everything else, unless I see the data, is hype. In uh, TWIF 796, Paul Binash discussed antibody evolution, which is new to me. Okay, so when you first encounter an antigen, you make an antibody called IgM, which is very low affinity. And as a consequence, there are five of them joined together to give you a higher avidity and work a little better until IgG arises, which takes place a couple of weeks later. IgG is higher affinity, but it's still not the best that it can be. In fact, even after IgG is made against whatever antigen it is that you've encountered, then it, the, the antibody genes undergo continued maturation. They go undergo somatic mutation in the lymph node, just randomly mutating the antibody genes until you get antibodies of higher affinity, which are then selected for us. You make higher and higher affinity antibody. That's antibody evolution. That takes more time. And that's what we see after six, eight, nine months. Uh, this high affinity antibodies, and in the case of SARS-CoV-2, antibodies that can neutralize all the variants. That's good. That's what it means in a nutshell. 
No, no, it wasn't Carl Zimmer. No. It was other other people who I've complained about and I've written to, in fact, and complained that their uh, reporting wasn't correct, and I was told that I'm the only one who says that. <clears throat> Are you and Amy tempted to put polio on hold to work on SARS-CoV-2? In January of, well, I would say March of 2020, we, in fact, uh, did want to begin working on SARS-CoV-2. Amy got trained to work in the BSL-3 lab at Columbia. Uh, we wrote a proposal. We sent it to NIH, got a great score, and to this day it has not been funded because, I don't know, it's a score that would have been funded anywhere else. And then we wanted to do some cool animal studies. We didn't have the money to do that, and Columbia wasn't providing the money. So basically, it's pretty much the big labs that have been able to pivot to SARS-CoV-2 because they have a lot of money. We're not big. We don't have a lot of money, so we haven't been able to do it. But we have, since the start, had a number of interesting projects. We couldn't bring them forward. And, and we are very sad about that, frankly. <clears throat> Thank you, Westfield, for your contribution. Really appreciate it. <laughs> the fact that you love the search, the discovery, and the sharing of knowledge is why it's fun to watch your show. That's what we try to do. I always wanted to share the, the research experience. That's why I started the podcast originally, and I'm glad it shows through. We try and do that you know, once we get past the uh, other annoyances that will inevitably intervene, right? Oh, good T-shirt. Antibodies wane, but T cells reign. Oh, let me copy that. How can I copy it? I can't copy it. Uh, I don't have a pen. Someone write it down and send it. Jeff, you got my email. Send it to me. I'll definitely make a t shirt. I love it. We get great t shirt ideas here on the um, live stream, the QA. Uh, what do you think of a nasal vaccine to stop virus from entering mucous membranes? Right, so <clears throat> nasal vaccines would give you high mucosal antibody, which would be good for blocking infection. Now, the problem is that they typically decline rapidly. You have memory cells that can produce them later, but they're not going to be there to prevent infection for a few days. The exception is the human papillomavirus vaccine, right, which gives you sustained high levels of, of mucosal IgA, and it is blocking infection. Now, if we could replicate that with other vaccines, it would be great, but we haven't been able to. So the flu vaccine, which is one of them is given intranasally, right? It's no better at preventing flu and enduring than any of the other vaccines. So we have to somehow get around this decline of, mu of uh, mucosal IgA to do that. It's a good question. Can you help me understand if there is heightened risk for spread of virus in large hockey arenas? I want to put a five-year-old in hockey with no masks. Is that okay? Um, so I don't know how many people are in the arena. Is it just a hockey team, two hockey teams? Um, there are ways to mitigate. You can do frequent testing, right? And before a practice or a game, you get tested and if anyone's positive they're not allowed to participate um keeping people down numbers but if you have a lot of people in the stands yeah that can be an issue if the kids are getting close to them right if they're separated then that's fine but then the kids are interacting with each other so you should talk to daniel griffin he's actually advised the nhl on how to <laughs> deal with mitigation Uh, yeah, Ultravax Israel is a bad omen. This is just nonsense. In fact, Israel is fine. They still have high efficacy against disease, serious disease and hospitalization and death. So, I, I, you know, it's all about antibody waning, vaccine efficacy dropping. Yeah, vaccine efficacy against PCR positivity. We don't care about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, good question. Thoughts on scientists' use of Twitter during the pandemic? A lot of bickering and tribalism. Yeah. So I, I joined Twitter in 2008, shortly after it started. I have, I don't know, 85,000 followers. But maybe two years ago, I stopped, I shut off my uh, notifications on my phone. I just got sick of the garbage. You know, people saying I didn't know what I was talking about. Uh, and 
people arguing. Yeah. I, I think here's what I think is a lot of scientists have found a prominence on Twitter that they didn't have before. They really like that. I always thought it was a good place to share information, not to share arguments. I don't get the the, the point of that. And there's so much bad information shared by all sorts of non-virologists, non-epidemiologists that it's pathetic and people don't know what to take as true or not. And a lot of the confusion arises because people, not just Twitter, it's Facebook and other social media as well. So I think it's too bad, but it's here to stay, right? It's just not going anywhere. Why do you think antibodies formed after vaccination won't wane for SARS-CoV-2 versus others? I never said that antibodies don't wane after SARS-CoV-2. Of course they do. What remains are memory B cells that can produce antibodies very quickly, right? Those always remain. But for most vaccines, antibodies wane after infection, after vaccination. You, you don't keep high levels of antibodies in the blood. What you keep are memory cells that can respond quickly, more quickly than, than that initial infection, for sure. Uh, does getting a SARS-CoV-2 infection after being fully vaccinated give you better protection than a booster? Good question. Paul B. Nash brought this up on TWIV on Friday. We don't know yet. We're waiting for the data because we do know infection, recovery, then a boost, a vaccine dose, you get great breadth of antibody synthesis. So is the opposite true or the inverse? Vaccinated, mild infection, I'm betting yes. I'm betting yes because I think that's why a lot of vaccines protect you really well because you get these constant boosts. We'll see. Can high levels of antibodies cause autoimmune disease? No, not necessarily. They would have to be directed against your proteins, right? And even though you have high levels, um, it's not an issue if they're not directed against you. Now, how do you know they're high levels? Did you have a quantitative antibody test? Because, and, and I assume it's against Spike, but... Um, I don't, I don't know what your numbers are. It may not really be that high. Has Delta increased transmission between tests in the lab or is this in, increased? So the Delta effect has been observed epidemiologically. And listen to Jeff Shaman a couple of weeks ago on TWIF. He explained all the factors that contribute to a virus moving quickly through a population. There are a lot of human factors, right? There are also environmental factors. And there are also virus factors. And he tries to model the virus with statistical models, but they're imprecise. The lab studies are not done yet. We're just seeing the beginnings of results for the alpha variant, the first one that raised this concern. It takes a long time to do lab experiments. And in the end, they may or may not support this idea of increased transmissibility. I think the variants are more fit. That's why they displace others. I think that's very clear. That happens with influenza all the time. But say if they reproduce better in the lab in the right cells from the respiratory tract, if they reproduce quicker, they do different things in animals. We have to find all that out to see if it builds a case for increased transmissibility in people. It's not easy to do. It's not been done for any human epidemic virus so far that I'm aware of. <clears throat> Hello, H. Zoo. For RNA virus, why are there plus strand and minus strand? Is there any evolutionary advantage? <clears throat> That's a good question, which I like to address in my virology course. Why do we have plus, minus, and double-stranded RNA? Why do we have single-stranded DNA and double-stranded DNA? We have seven classes of genome. Why? The first RNA viruses that arose were probably plus-stranded. Why do, why do I say that? Evolutionarily, it seems to be the case. Um, and then double-stranded RNA viruses and then minus RNA viruses. We can, if it were up to me, if I were designing viruses, I would make them all plus-stranded because 
as soon as the plus strand gets in the cell, it can be translated into protein. The minus and the double stranded RNA have to have an additional step. But apparently it doesn't matter. They're still evolutionarily fit. So the answer is not very satisfying, but it's simply that they both can compete. They both have found niches. And RNA viruses in general are extraordinarily successful globally in all the species, much more so than DNA viruses because they have a higher evolutionary rate, higher mutation rate. But why we have the reasons for all these seven kinds, we just don't know. How will we reach herd immunity if kids don't get vaccinated? Well, kids less than 12. Okay, so here's the thing about herd immunity. You could calculate a population number for SARS-CoV-2 and it's 70 to 80%. Uh, sorry, it's 50 to 70% based on an R0 of two to three. So let's be conservative. You need 70% plus the number of people have already been infected and have immunity. So now you're, well, we haven't vaccinated 60%, right? So we're getting close with the number of infections. <clears throat> the kids don't, if we got all the adults immunized, the kids wouldn't impact that because they are not a big enough percentage of the population to impact herd immunity. The problem is, though, kids cluster in schools, right? So if you have a classroom where no kids are immunized, there's no chance of having herd immunity there, right? And that's why outbreaks occur in communities of people who don't get vaccinated because there are a lot of seronegative people. So herd immunity is a population concept which assumes homogeneity of immunization across the population, but that's almost never the case. There are almost always pockets of highly immunized people and poorly immunized people. So in that sense, you're always going to have outbreaks as, as long as immunization rates remain low. I hope that, that makes sense. I did say it. You're right. Anyone who listens to you conclude the same thing. The virologist at the intelligence agency is working. To, oh, that's the Biden thing. Yeah, we both said it. But as my wife says, who cares if you said it? Move on. And she's right. But I, I just... I said it to many news interv on many news interviews that that investigation is not going to find anything out because it's not a scientific investigation. A um, this person of nutrition refused to get vaccinated because he considered himself too healthy, which is crazy. Because how do you know that you don't have a particular mutation that would make you highly susceptible? You just don't know. It's kind of hubris, right? Now he got COVID. Says the vaccine is not as good as natural immunity. No, it's. It's not true. Natural immunity. So infection and a dose of vaccine is the best that we know of so far. And it depends on the person also. Vaccines versus uh, immunity. Okay. That's the J&J &J news about a booster. I'm sorry. That's the one news I didn't see today. Uh, thank you so much for your contribution. Really appreciate it. We have 660 people here. I'm su I'm surprised. I thought we'd go back to about 400. Thanks, folks. <laughs> uh, Vincent, VC, vaccine 1 minus 1 over R0. That's the formula for figuring um, herd immunity percentage. No, it doesn't have to uh, account for the efficiency of yeah, so you have to impede transmission. That's right. But I don't believe these numbers for Delta are correct. I think they're wrong. I think the models are wrong. So I think it's still R0, 2 to 3, 70, 50 to 70%. So we'll go 70%. How's that? At what point should K-12 shut down? There's no reason. Now, if the teachers are all vaccinated, everyone's masked, they keep class numbers low. They do testing, testing, testing. They can keep the, the numbers of infected low. As for how much, I, I could give you a number, but everybody's going to be different. But in the fall, we're going to have a lot of infections in school. You'll see, unfortunately. I really i am sad to say that, but that's because you know K-12 is not going to be immunized. Did I hear Lori Garrett get OPV and IPV round the wrong way? No, I didn't. Oh. 
if she were on our podcast, which she was recently, she, we would have fixed it. But Al Franken has no clue, right? It's fine. Other people can in, uh, interview scientists. We're not the only ones. We don't have a lock on it. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm glad you we restore your hope and humanity, even when we argue. Sorry. Why do we not have a booster covering Delta? Why would you need one? What do you want to do? It's already the current vaccines already prevent hospitalization and death. What do you think you're going to prevent infection? No, even if you matched it to Delta, in six months the antibodies would wane and you'd still get infected. So I don't understand why you want a, a matched. And I mean they're under development, sure, but I don't see why you need a matched one. Uh, if you're a high school teacher and a student tests positive in class with masks on, what is the best testing regimen? Well, you said you tested. What kind of test? PCR test. So if the student is positive, she needs to be isolated and then test it again in a day or two and see if it's not a false positive. You see if it's continuing, if the cycle threshold is increasing, is decreasing. I mean, staying at a low level, which means more RNA copies, viral RNA copies. How am I going on Joe Rogan? I haven't been been invited, um, but I'm going to be on uh, the Lex Friedman. It'll be released at some point. Maybe Rogan will see it and say, I got to get this guy on. I don't know. I'm not going to beg for it. I mean, I think the Lex Friedman appearance will help get us more people because I want to teach more people. I think it's really important. People need to, to understand there are good sources of the right information out there. Does SARS rely on Tampres and ACE2? SARS-CoV-2, are you talking about the current virus? Yeah, so, so Tampres is the cell surface protease that can cleave the spike to the let fusion. So yes, it can get in via temperus and binding to ACE2, but if there's no temperus, the virus can get in from the endosome using a different protease, cathepsins, which, by the way, have to be cleaved by pH-dependent proteases. So the cathepsins are pH-dependent, and that's why hydroxychloroquine worked in cells and culture where the entry is via cathepsins, but in the lung where it's via temperus is Hydroxychloroquine had no effect. Uh, Chinese COVID secrets. There are no secrets. It didn't come from a lab, folks. She wasn't working on it. Nothing close to it in the lab. Move on. I don't get it. Thank you, Carol Cat, for your contribution. Incubate me. You bet. We will. Yes, Lori Garrett said three years. You bet. Okie dokie. I am an optimist, despite my cynicism, which people remind me I have. Uh, I am an optimist. Maybe incorrectly so. I don't know. Could there be any correct connection between the severity of a person's response to the vaccine and the severity of symptoms? No, none whatsoever. I mean, it's an interesting idea, right? But I don't see it. From the data. Canada is at 64% fully vaxxed. You're ahead of us. <laughs> You're ahead of the U.S. Good for you. Why in the ever-loving world are you all not breaking out Jacobs and the rest of the world is bringing in soft mandates? Don't ask me not my purview and I'm fully vaxxed and everybody I know is fully vaxxed I'm just puzzled if Novavax becomes available would it be a better thing to use for boosters because it prevents presents a wider range well Novavax is a spike protein it's not going to do anything better than mRNA vaccines in terms of epitopes right I think the numbers are going to be similar to the mRNA vaccines in terms of protection against uh, severe COVID. Do we know how long after the third dose of an mRNA antibody levels would rise to levels seen after 
the second dose. Uh, there has been a preliminary three-dose report. I don't remember the numbers. I don't remember exactly how long it would take, but at least two to three weeks, if not longer. It's a good question. You should ask to go on Al Franken's podcast. Why don't you guys write? So two weeks ago, someone said, get on Lex Friedman. I said, ask him. And immediately he asked me. So write Al Franken. It's better than me writing and saying, get me on. That's kind of self-serving, right? But if you write and say, this Vinny and Amy, they're so interested in, in uh, virology and you, you should have them on because whatever you want to say. Now, someone said to Lex Friedman that was a good explainer and did all this stuff. So do it and I'll go on. Sure. Sure, no problem. Is there data indicating that T-cells are what are impacting disease and uh, antibodies handle infection. Uh, yeah, I think the best, there are two pieces of information. One is that even with waning antibodies in terms of neutralization assays, we're still protected against severe disease and death, and that's carried out by T cells. Yes, by analogy with other infections. Hasn't been tested in an animal model yet. There's been one experiment in non-human primates, which we covered on TWIV a couple of weeks ago, where they did deplete uh, B and T cells. And I think the results were not definitive. You should go listen to that episode. And then the other is, after the first dose, dose of the mRNA vaccine, you start to see protection against COVID kick in in about 11 days. And until the second dose, you know, which is three or four weeks, depending on which mRNA vaccine, there's no neutralizing antibodies, none detectable. So how are people protected? Most likely by T cells. So yeah, the data, that's the suggestion and the experiments need to be done. When Vincent says only, well, I got me bring this up, I'm sorry. When Vincent says only 51%, he's not using percentage of eligible given that those under 12 are not yet eligible, that's a misleading statistic. I'm just using the percentage of, is that what the percentage means of eligible? All right. When you go to reporting sites and they say 51%, is that only eligible people? But still, the under 12 are not a, a substantial enough fraction of the population to prevent herd immunity, if that's what you're thinking about. Did the Pfizer CEA say that? I got an email today where they quoted the Pfizer CEA saying that and said, if you'd like an interview, just send me an email. Yeah. If vaccinated, exposed, or positive antigen test and symptomatic or monoclonal, something, something Daniel would recommend. Only if you're in a high risk. So I'm a high risk because I'm 68, right? I could get serious disease. So he would give me monoclonals at that first positive. Not waiting to get into the hospital because then it's very late. Thank you, Palm Beach, for your contribution. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate your support. Dr. John Campbell, you have to get him on TWIV. And now he has over 1.3 million. So why do I have just 91,000 and he has 1.3 million. So as Amy says, he's telling people what they want to hear. You know, he said immediately the alpha is more transmissible. The delta is more transmissible. It's more virulent. It's evading antibodies. He's the sensationalist. Why do I have to get him on TWIV? I don't understand. To say things that I don't agree with? Uh, yeah, Amy thinks five years, but, you know, that's globally. It could be over sooner in the U.S., right, if we could get people vaccinated. Yep. Uh, yeah, you heard a dog, out, two dogs outside, so we're in this house where the dogs can... It's a, this is actually a little cottage, and then there's a house in the front where the dogs are, so they come out to walk. And yeah, they were barking before. <laughs> Luna's a barker. I have two dogs, Luna and Pepper. 
I was vaccinated in March. I got COVID six weeks ago. I have long COVID. Are there any treatments? No. I'm sorry that you had long COVID, but it's only six weeks, right? So look at the bright side. It could resolve. It's some, some symptoms could resolve sooner than later, but there are no treatments yet because people barely understand what's going on. Thailand is investigating fractional dose intradermal vaccine delivery. Could that reduce or eliminate vaccine-induced thrombocytopenia? I don't know. It could. We don't really know what's triggering it, right? So I can't really say it would. But it's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, approach. So yeah, Amy has some issues, obviously, because she didn't see the intro and she didn't see the, she doesn't see the comments that I post. And of course, she said it was me, but <laughs> you guys are all seeing it, so I'll go fix it on Friday. Now the thing is, when when she leaves for her job, wherever that may be, I can't go there and fix it. So we're gonna have to make something foolproof. But in the world of computers, as you know. Plenty of you IT folk out there. There's no foolproof, right? Thank you, Magnus, for your, your contribution. Really, really appreciate it. Forget about third shots for a moment. What about a second shot for J&J? &J? I likely wouldn't get a third of mRNA, but it seems to make sense to get a second J&J. &J. I don't know. Is J&J &J one dose still protecting against severe disease and hospitalization and death? That's the metric. If... Those numbers start to go up, then maybe a second J and J would be the thing. But I know that back when J and J did its third, its phase three, hundred percent effective against the B dot one dot three five one variant against uh, hospitalization and death. So I don't see why that would change. But that's the metric you need. Look at severe disease hospitalization. If it starts to go up, then whatever vaccine you're on, you should consider a, a third dose or a second or a third dose for sure. Why don't virologists do the experiments to see if it's more transmissible? Okay, so it's hard because you need a BSL-3 laboratory and you need money. So we have money to do our virus, right? We're not supposed to use it for SARS-CoV-2 because then we don't do the experiments that we need to renew the grant, and then we have no money. So only the very wealthy labs can do just pivot to SARS-CoV-2. And there are a bunch of big labs. So, for example, Rocky Mountain Labs, it's part of NIH. They have non-human primates. They have a good amount of money. They have put out a preprint on transmissibility of the alpha variant. The alpha variant because it takes a long time to do these experiments, especially in non-human primates. And you can't use many of them. So it's tough. Um, so, so they will get done, but not probably not in time to make any impact on this outbreak. But in fact, it doesn't matter. You just need to get vaccinated. And any variant, you're protected against death from any variant. But it's hard for virologists to do this. It's a money thing, most likely. I'd love to do it. No way I'm going to be doing it. And so I write a grant now. I have no results. So they'll say, yeah, you don't know how to work on SARS-CoV-2. It never get funded. Never. You have to stay in your own little backyard, unfortunately, unless you have a ton of money. And then you can branch out and do other things and have a lot of people. You get a lot of work done and publish paper. And then you can get a new grant to do that. So them has got gets you know that saying <laughs> regarding the misunderstanding that conflates antibody titer with long-term vaccine efficiency does any vaccine or acute infection ever lead to high antibody long term not sustained no no unless you have hiv where in which case you have continuous high level virus and you you have a lot of antibody production but it's not useful because the virus changes very quickly you know All right. I don't know. Someone said 
what what, what would be an amazing experiment? Uh, Amy's gone, so she can't tell you. Why did they delete their samples? They didn't delete any samples. Everything is there that they had. Not a Campbell fan. He's too gullible. I find he's gullible on a lot of things that he was wrong about. People like him, right? He has a comforting voice. Fine. Go for it. Not my cuppa. But a lot of people like him. I don't, I'm not telling you not, not to, but I don't want him to come on Twiv because... I would disagree with most of what he says. Not that I need people on Twitter that I agree with, but I want to have people whose opinions are grounded in science. I don't think his are. Coppola has been quoting a lot of data this week showing waning of vaccine efficacy. Now, the hospitalization is simply wrong. Topol is a cardiologist, not an infectious disease person. And, and a, some cardiologist wrote me and said, you know, cardiologists are just internists with different training. And so internists are supposed to know infectious disease, right? You don't need an ID specialist for every infection, right? But he's wrong on many things. And he doesn't even think T cells are important. So I think there's no evidence for waning efficacy against severe disease. You can read report after report. And there's none. So Topol is wrong. But he'd love there to be because he wants the attention that he gets on Twitter. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Sheldon, you have no clue. I have multiple Dysons. They're great. And I have multiple other vacuums. They all break. So... Before you call names, okay, make sure you have all your data. It's not really nice. I love I love Dyson's. They're great. And I've never seen a more powerful vacuum. Believe me, I've had um I've had lots of others. I freaked out to find neighbors going to an African safari in Ohio. The animals come to your car, you feed them. How is this okay and open? Uh, so you're wondering if you're going to get any infections. I don't know of any documented infections like that. You could certainly infect them. That wouldn't be good. Um, but it's the kind of thing that makes money, and um, people like to do that, right? I mean, I've been to zoos. I've been near animals that are just across the fence. I think... It's probably not good to put your hand in their mouth and get it saliva and then touch yourself. I, I agree with you. Are there factors that affect the strength of the memory response? Yeah, absolutely. There's the immunogen itself. A nice study was done by Rafi Ahmed's group, which we talked about on Twiff, showing unadjuvanted Influenza vaccine, in mice anyway, no memory whatsoever. The implication is maybe adjuvants would be better for that particular vaccine, and of course in mice. Uh, age for sure. The older you get, the harder it is for you to establish memory cell populations. And other things that we don't know about, other genetic factors. So yes, for sure. And the vaccine too. Heard on NPR that the R naught is six or seven. So this, again, is based on models that are just looking at the spread of the virus in outbreaks. They do not take into consideration human interactions. And as Jeff Shaman will tell you, R naught, your R naught is not the same as mine. So it's really not correct to say. It's six or seven because it could be something else somewhere else. R naught is well, R naught is supposed to be determined at the beginning of an outbreak, so they're wrong about that. When no one is immune, then later, if you want to recalculate it, it's R E or R T, in which case it's a very different factor and it's very squishy. So NPR, you may like NPR, they don't get it all right. I really have a problem with science reporting because they're listening to people. We're not feeding them the right information. I haven't 
heard anything from Louis Rossman, but Lex Friedman, um, Lex Friedman called me, emailed me the next day. Yeah, it's great. Is an error like SV40 possible today? Not worried about current vaccines, just curious. So the, what what uh, John is talking about is that uh, the first two polio vaccines were contaminated with SV40 because they're produced in monkey kidney cells. For the monkeys, uh, well, in the old days, we didn't we didn't breed them. We captured them and um, then took out their kidneys and made cell cultures, and they had viruses, and then one of them was SV40. So today it shouldn't happen because you can check your cell line. You can do, characterize it very carefully. The cell line you're going to use to make vaccines, you sequence the total RNA and make sure there are no uh, viruses there that you don't know about. Now, of course, it may be a new virus that no one knows about, but it may have homology to some known ones, in which case you can detect it. So I think it's far less likely to happen. And of course, with mRNA vaccines, it doesn't happen at all. With protein-based vaccines, no issue. But um, I think not that happening today, no. How is it that a virus from a bat could bind ACE2 in a human cell? How did the virus in a bat learn about ACE2? Well, they're, 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 uh, similar. they're similar receptors in bats. There's ACE2 in bats. And the other thing that's key is that you don't need many changes in spike to allow it to bind to an ACE2 of a different species. And while these viruses are reproducing in bats, they're just, the genome is mutating and throwing off spikes of all different amino acids. So randomly one is made with a one or two amino acid change that now has high affinity for humans. Of course, it doesn't matter if there are no humans around, right? <laughs> and that's the key, contact. If all these viruses incubating in bats, mutating like crazy, making the perfect genome to infect a human. But if no one's around, it never happens. And that's why pandemics are rare. This one found a human somehow, and it was ready to go, took off. So it's all random. That's the key. You have to understand how much viruses mutate. They mutate like crazy, and that's what happened. And, you know, if you don't think about viruses all the time, as I have for 40 years, 40 years doing research and teaching and writing, I get it. I get it. So maybe to a lot of people, it's um, just not possible. But it is. Listen to my lectures. You'll get it. Uh, thank you, H. Zoo, for your contribution. Please, Amy, please tell WHO you will serve. Deadline is September 10th. I'll tell her. I think she should. I think she should. I'm, I'm halfway through the questions. How about that? <laughs> uh, ignobles make you laugh and then make you think. You know, I I know what the ignobles are, but I couldn't describe it to Amy. So thank you for doing that. But that was a long time ago. Wow. Wow. Are there any antibody tests that will check for COVID antibodies from as early as January or before that are for home use? Uh, what's Binax now? What is it checking? Spike in nucleocapsid, folks? Uh, what are we doing? What does Binax now test for Binax now? Uh, you know, it's not a science. It's not going to come up. Nucleocapsid, it's nucleocapsid only. So yeah, you could use that to see if you were infected before. You, you should have antibodies. But how would you know when you got infected? That's the problem. Unless you have stored serum from before then, right? Peter Hotez has stated several times this week that third shot is needed due to significant boost due to waiting immunity. Yeah, well, Peter is, I don't know what Peter's agenda is. Waning immunity to getting PCR positive infection. Who cares? There's no waning immunity against serious disease. I'm sure he gets that. I don't know why he's saying this. I don't get it. But what did someone say? Listening, I'd rather listen to my ex-wife than Peter Hotez. 
have friends that do not want mRNA vaccine. They claim they would get vaccinated to get today if we had more traditional vaccines. Well, what do they want? Because we have a adenovirus vectored vaccine, uh, which, well, is that more traditional? That's been around longer than mRNA vaccines. Uh, if you want, do they want a polio, SOC-like polio vaccine? Well, they could go get one of the many inactivated vaccines, but they'll have to go to another country to get that because we don't make them here. Novavax, a protein vaccine, when that comes out, that's more traditional. It's protein subunit. They could get that. So there, there are options out there for sure. You don't have to have the mRNA vaccines. Personally, I love mRNA. It's great. It's almost as great as viruses. I think the real virus is the anti-vax mind virus. Are you surprised there's so many people unwilling to get vaccinated? I am, actually. I, as I said originally, I, I thought that this uh, pandemic would be over in the fall because I thought most, you know, we'd have the 70 to 80 percent immune population in the U.S. at least. I'm, I'm eliminating other countries who can't get vaccinated, and that's very sad, right? So I am surprised that there's so much resistance, and I hear every day from all kinds of people. I mean, someone, some reporter talked to me today about police departments in various places who aren't requiring police to get vaccinated, which seems crazy because police contact so many people, right? They could get sick and lose their career or they can infect others, which seems counter to what they're supposed to do, protect people, right? So yeah, I'm really surprised, but I'm naive. I am totally naive. Total population of 250 to 300 million people, 95% decline would be ideal. Uh, what? It's talking about the U.S. population would be would be immune or what? I'm not sure what you're saying, Yoko. Sorry. Yeah, here we go. This has got to be highlighted. <laughs> Your immunity has not waned. Great. You bet, Patricia. It certainly has not. <laughs> Um, if I bring ivermectin to the hospital for my friend with COVID, will the doctors let him take it? No, he's got to take, they, they have to give him a drug like that. You can't just bring it in. I could ask for it. See what they say. Weren't they ver working on a universal vaccine to include common cold coronas? Yeah, well, this is going to take a long time. That's a ways off. It's years off. I understand that polio and measles are all not sterilizing, but they don't have an animal reservoir. Do you think that the fact that SARS-CoV-2 can establish an animal reservoir is an issue? Yeah, it's an issue because it will never be eradicated. I mean, it's in bats already, right? That's where we got it. So you couldn't eradicate it because in theory, you could come over again from bats. However, SARS-1 was eradicated and it's still out there in bats. It hasn't spilled over again. Well, we got SARS-2 instead, right? But, okay, so let's say SARS-CoV-2 didn't infect anyone but humans and the bats that it came from, then you might have a chance at eradicating. But because such there's such high asymptomatic, presymptomatic spread, I think it's really hard because you're never going to get, uh, you're never going to find all the people who are infected to, to, to limit the transmission, whereas with SARS-1, we could do that. Yep. Thank you, Neil, for your contribution. Amy was on form today. She's had a rough week. Yeah. <laughs> so Vanity saw Amy laugh from 30,000 feet. That's pretty cool. Is, does the nasal mucosal associated lymphoid tissue generating antibodies? I read that it's tough to generate antibodies in the nose. Ah, just the nose, not the nasopharynx. I don't know. It's a good question. I think the other parts of the mucosa are really good. Um, the nose, I'm not sure that that's a significant source, but I got I have to check that. Yep. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, Peter Hotez does wear the bow tie, right? Someone tell Daniel that Twiv doesn't like bow ties. How can I tell him that? He's our hero, right? He does this every week. He's reasonable. He listens to logic. He gets it. 
Daniel gets it. When I say, wait a minute, no, that's not right. He said, yeah, you're right. You get it. It's very, very tough for, for scientists to pivot and say I was wrong. I'm happy to tell you when I'm wrong, folks. Believe me. I'm happy to tell you when I'm wrong. Uh, Amy is working on EVD68. She can tell you next time. Very interesting stuff. <clears throat> Hmm. I'm a little embarrassed asking this, but I will anyway. If the virus attacks the nasal mucosa, will using Flonase decrease my immune response? I have no idea. An allergy medication? Um, I think it's probably transient. So yeah, anything you spray in is going to be very transient, so I don't think it's an issue. Do lipid rafts exist? Yeah, a lipid raft is a name for small parts of the plasma membrane, right? The outer membrane of a cell that have a different composition, chemical composition from the remaining plasma membrane. And many viruses prefer to enter. I shouldn't say prefer. They don't have any such feelings, but they enter mainly <laughs> at lipid rafts. I'm not sure that we know that for SARS-CoV-2. On a scale of 1 to 10, how afraid of COVID should someone be if they easily fought off last year and have been fully vaccinated? Uh, 1 is least afraid and 10 is most afraid? I would say 1. You're at 1 or 2. You're the best in terms of immunity. You're the best. We've just realized that. Thank you, Mr. Ozzy Cam, for your contribution to the incubator. Uh, I have no, no uh, intention of... Amy not staying. It's up to her, you know, when she moves on. Why don't I accept that Delta is more transmissible? Because in these outbreaks, they didn't account for the human factor. You cannot say it's more transmissible when you may have people interacting. That's why. And transmission is only determined in the lab, not by statistical models. <clears throat> Does SARS-CoV-2 suppress interferon? How does this compare to other viruses? Is there a lecture on that? So it does. It's very good at suppressing uh, interferon. And it is um, better than some viruses, not as good as other viruses, but it plays a big role in some people um, who develop serious disease. Surgeons used to scoff at washing. Yeah, but then they learned, right? The, the, the British guy who said it makes sense to uh, wash your hands, right? A bloody uh, gown was the sign of a great surgeon, right? They would never change between patients. A lot of women died in childbirth. They get infected. They learned you had to wash your hands, and now we get it. But we're not in those times anymore, are you? Why? Well, I don't dislike Campbell. I just think that he's a different shtick than what we do. We do science. He doesn't do science. He does other things. I'm not sure what he does, but it's not science. <laughs> uh, watching while studying for my virology exam. It's a good way to study, right? You can hear virology in one ear. You bet. Why can't someone take one of the standard cold coronas, replace its spike with Delta, then release it into the world? You can't, you can't immunize people by releasing viruses like that. You have to immunize everybody at the same time. I hate to say it, but the questions are getting repetitive and less interesting. And why do you think that might be, Adam? You, do you know them all? Do you know all the answers? We'll ask something that we don't know. Thank you for your contribution. Really appreciate it. What do you think of the new va Pfizer vaccine name? I think that's he's asking, Corey is asking this question of everyone. Um, what's the name? Let's look it up. Uh, Comirnaty. Oh, it's horrible. Let's not just push that anymore. It's horrible. 
I mean, BNT, blah, 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 isn't great either, right? My wife was double-backed in February with Pfizer. Does she need a booster soon? <laughs> I don't know. The, look, Tony, people who need boosters, maybe. The FDA has said if you're immunosuppressed, like you're getting an organ transplant, you need a booster. I suspect older people, I'm not sure what the age is going to be, are going to be recommended next. But if you're young and healthy, I don't think you need one. And I don't think it's going to last more than six months at preventing infection. Yeah, we could get Ralph back, sure. I've got a couple of people lined up for the next few weeks. I could do that, yeah. Thank you, Jess Powell, for your contribution. Some doctors on Twitter are saying they're seeing COVID and flu in the same person. It's not unexpected. We're moving into the flu season, right? Typically now in the fall. So we're going to start seeing that for sure. Absolutely. How bad can early flu and COVID-19? It could be, it depends on the patient, right? Uh, it could be fine. It could be no worse than COVID. It could be worse. It really depends. To his credit, though, Minna has suggested that messaging to public about expectations for the vaccines must be changed before people lose confidence. Jennifer, what do you think we do here on TWIV? We're always giving you the right message. I've always said, this is the way the vaccines work. They don't prevent infection. They never did. And the press made it up that they would and that they were waning in efficacy against infection. That was never on the table. I don't get it. Because with one exception... Human vaccines don't prevent infection. Now, maybe we are getting slightly more disease than with other vaccines. I'll grant you that, and that's maybe a messaging that we're going to have to give people. But listen to TWIV. We've been telling you for months, the vaccines don't prevent infection. They prevent you from dying. Thank you, H. Zhu, for your uh, contribution. You have a cool mask with belief science on it. Where'd you get it? Now, my wife gave it to me. Don't get it. It should be trust science, not scientist. So that my mask says believe in scientists, which is not right. You shouldn't believe in scientists. You should believe in science. So you can have one made. You, know, you can almost go anywhere on the internet, have a mask made with whatever you want on it. To make one that says, trust science or believe in science. The scientist part is not right because as we've, we have said, the scientists can lead you astray, especially those, some of them with the bow ties in Texas, right? <laughs> Could you clarify the difference between infection and disease? Oh, so an infection simply means the virus comes in you, starts to multiply or reproduce. It can happen without you feeling any symptoms. Symptoms are what you feel, right? Happens all the time. So and then if a vaccinated individual gets infected and experiences only mild system symptoms, are they considered infected? Yes, absolutely. Infected, how do we measure it? You can get a PCR test. If you're PCR positive, you're infected. You may not be a good person to detect it because if you don't feel anything, that is, if you don't have any symptoms, you're not going to know that you're infected, but you could still have virus in you reproducing. This is a good question. A lot of people are confused. They equate infection with disease, but they are totally dissociable. You know, because you can't, as even we said earlier, you could have disease without infection. So at the end of a, of a COVID episode, when you're not making much virus anymore, you could still have serious disease as a result of an inflammatory response. But when that virus first comes in you, begins to reproduce in those first cells, you don't have any disease. You may not even feel it. So that's the difference. My anti-mask friends say masks don't work because the tiny virus can go through it. Well, the thing is, there's no free tiny viruses. They're all in droplets, right, that you're expelling from your nose and mouth. And the droplets are pretty big. They're microns in size, so they get hung up in the mask and they have the virus in them. So that's why that works. Yeah, the tiny virus, if you were just exhaling tiny viruses alone, but you don't. It's always in, in water or the fluid from your respiratory tract.
Monica Gandhi distinguishes between infection and colonization. I don't know what that is about. We don't use colonization in virology. It's infection, infection and disease. Don't get it. I guess I made a mistake. I got the booster. You didn't make any mistake. It's fine. If you wanted a booster, you got it. No problem. I'm just saying you don't need it. But, you know, you're 78. Maybe in that age group, it's better to err on the side of getting them. Like a friend, Elio Schechter, called me today. He's 93. Should I get a booster? I said, look, I don't think they're needed, but you're 93. I don't want to tell you not to, and then you get really sick. Because remember, no vaccine is going to be 100%, right? In the, in the bigger population at preventing disease, you're going to get some serious disease. It's just maybe a small percent. So I don't want my friend Alier to be that small percent. So you're you're good. Good. If you're in sight on a spike one, two, be evidence of gain of function. No, it is not. It is absolutely not. It's put there. It, it, it appeared or it exists in a way that no human would ever make. And I don't have time to go through that for, with you. But. It is not a sign, and other coronaviruses have a fear in cleavage site. So this is just a non-argument for it, totally. How many cases and deaths a year do you think will become the baseline for COVID? So you could go from flu, which any year you have between 5,000 and 40 or 50,000 deaths in the U.S. alone from flu, and that's totally accepted. Nobody makes a fuss. The press doesn't even cover it. So that's what we're going to probably end up doing. 5,000 to 50,000 deaths a year. How do adjuvants work? Um, a couple of ways. So the best understood is that they are actually, they activate the innate immune response. So the innate immune system is a, is a response that happens really early after infection, which, between minutes and hours. And so it responds before antibodies and T cells can be made. And the way it detects a pathogen is it there are receptors in the innate immune system that, that can detect molecules that are foreign. And so some adjuvants are actually those molecules. They activate the innate response. They cause inflammation. And inflammation gives you a better adaptive response. It gives you better antibodies and T cells because it attracts T, T cells and dendritic cells to the infected area or to the area where the adjuvant is. So that's one way that adjuvant works by being innate immune ligands. Uh, the other way is that when injected, they tend to concentrate the antigen at the injection site, and it diffuses away more slowly. It's called the depot effect, and it's, so it's active over a longer period of time, for sure. Why am I in a new spot? I took a few days off. I, I, I'm here in, at the Jersey Shore. And um, I came here yesterday, Tuesday, and I'm going back to Thursday. So, and <laughs> I'm here. I work on the house the whole time. Yep. That's why I'm in these different digs, which are not optimal. I'm sorry. And I got, right, I got this light on my forehead. Because the, the light I have here, it's a portable light. Look at this. How cool is this? It's one of these fluorescent wands that you can make different colors. This is, I have it at a, a kind of a warm color here, but it's on a tripod, as you can see, and it's just sitting over here. And I could not, for the life of me, <laughs> get get the spot out. Now, I mean, if I put it up above, and it's kind of bright, there, there's still a spot there. So anyway, that's why I'm in a new place. It's temporary digs. It's not easy to do a good uh, show, right? Okay, let's see what else we have here. It looks like a Swiss Airbnb. It's funny. This is a little cottage that we have, and my son wants to make a, an Airbnb out of it. Yeah, I mean, you, I got... So these are uh, actually <laughs> lace curtains I bought in. Where did I buy them? In Brussels, many years ago at a meeting, they have, they have geese on them, and and that you some of you may know what that is. That's a classic. And then on the other side here, this is like the kitchen area, and then there's a bedroom back there, and then there's dining area here. Eh, whatever. It's just for today. 
All right, let's blast through here to the end. It's almost 10 o'clock, and um, I'd like to have a glass of wine. I never drink before live streams. Why don't you? All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ozzy Cam. I did. I did answer your question. And as if we do repeat the same things over and over, I'm sorry about that, but that's the way it is, right? And there are different people here and so forth. Um, so I'm sorry for the repetition. Uh, let's speed down to to do some um, super chats. Lex did not tell me when he's posting. But you know, the, he's got a lot of editing to do because he has two cameras set up, one on me and one on him. And then they're both running, so now he has two videos and he's got to cut between them, depending on who's talking. It's a lot of work in post-production. It's too much. I would do live switching, frankly, but so it's his show. So I, I don't know when it's going to come out, but you'll, you'll see. I'll announce it for sure. Uh, a lot of so many good questions. <laughs> How does the mRNA vaccine know when to stop producing? Um, all mRNAs have a half life, right? Could be seconds, can be minutes, can be hours. In other words, the time, fifty percent of the RNA molecules, and there are many, many thousands, hundreds of thousands that get injected into you. They decay, they break up, and the speed at which they decay depends on sequences that are built into the mRNA. So these don't last forever, and they eventually decay. So this, the spike doesn't know, the mRNA doesn't know, but the cell machinery recognizes the signal and degrades it. Because our mRNAs that are naturally in us, they don't last forever either. They have to turn over. So there's, for sure, it's the, the spike mRNA is gone in a few days. What's prevented us from developing a vaccine against the four or so common colds? Who's going, to, who's going to take the vaccine? We can't get people to take a, vi a vaccine for a virus that kills a lot of people. And the common cold coronas don't kill many people. And so who's going to take it? There are no diagnostics. So you would just take this like a flu vaccine, right, routinely. I don't know how often you'd have to get it. There's just no market for it. It's not serious enough a disease, frankly. It doesn't have a medical need. Right. Thank you, Sandy, for your contribution. Really appreciate it. I'm worried about my mom who cares for my dad who has cancer and works in an elementary school whose board just voted mass should be optional. Any good resources? Why don't you send your question to Daniel at microbe.tv and we'll ask it of him instead of me trying to come up with resources here. Absolutely. Hey, Jed, if, uh, we'd love to work with you. You're, you're in New York City. All right. Get the incubator set up. Come visit and we can chat. All right. Let's see. Aw, an elderly couple, double mask with latex gloves. I'm so sorry. Yeah, the gloves we don't need. <laughs> thank you, Del El Sendero. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it that you like our teaching, and I appreciate your contribution. If you were advising a government of a country that has a really high vaccination rate about their border crossing policies, what would you tell them? Uh, you, if you could require vaccination from certain countries where infection rates are high or from all countries. I think that's what a lot of countries are going to do. I think it's a reasonable approach. All right, we should wrap this up because you folks are really good. There's 690 of you, and I'm amazed that you're still here. Thank you for um, your contribution, Jamie. Really appreciate it. And if I seem prickly at times or grumpy, I apologize. Just don't take it personally. I don't have a good excuse. <laughs> Powell, thank you so much for your contribution. Really appreciate it. What was it that Jeff said? For the, Jeff's going to email me the T-shirt. See, I've already forgotten without writing it down. 
why is the mRNA from the vaccine unstable, but viral RNA can linger? Well, because why would a virus RNA evolve to have short-lived RNA, right? It's going to evolve to be longer-lived. That's the beauty of evolution and natural selection. And of course, we designed the mRNA vaccine to, to have a finite half-life, so it's not around forever. You bet. Okay, Mr. Ozzie Cam, thank you for your contribution. I sent you the evidence. Okay, I will look at it. Sorry, Mr. Ozzie Cam, I don't buy the evidence because you're missing variables, but I don't want to keep talking about this. Uh, it's not productive. Thank you, Mary, for your contribution and for your, um, your, your thoughts about the proposals. Uh, and I'm skipping a lot of good questions. I'm really sorry to skip them. Uh, the Twitter School of Medicine, that's another good one. I graduated from the Twitter School of Medicine, yeah. Yep, yep. Um, if you have questions that I didn't answer, come back next week. I'm here every week. I even did this on my supposed time off this week, but I didn't. You know, the problem is if you take a vacation, you don't go anywhere. It's not a vacation. Anyway, I'm here for three days. I still talk to journalists. I do this pod. I do Daniels. I'm not complaining, but uh, <laughs> I'm fine. I love it all. I, I staked some trees today that were tilting over, right? Thank you, Tom. No worries. Everyone has lives. But thank you for your contribution. Really appreciate it. Oh, look, this person has a Lambda uh, icon, the Lambda variant. Would you choose to give third shot or send vaccine to other countries? Oh, no question. I'd send it to other countries. But nobody's asking me except you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Thank you, Bad Cat, for your contributions. I don't want mild disease at 70. Okay. So are you protected from long COVID? Not clear. You might not be. So if, if, and the data aren't really clear on that yet, but if it turns out that a mild disease in a fully vaccinated person leads to substantial long COVID, then I would say that's a good reason to get a vaccine, uh, a boost or a third shot. I don't want to call it a boost. Okay. Thank you, Ian, as usual for your contribution. Kia ora. Thank you. Appreciate it. Do we know how long patients with long COVID remain contagious no longer than a normal patient, which is no longer than 10 days or 14 days at the most. They have other issues causing their illness, not just, not virus. They have inflammatory issues for sure. Ah, there's so many good questions. I'm so sorry that I have to skip them over. There's nothing I like better than great questions. Thank you, Guy, for your contribution. Uh, I really appreciate that you're, all of you are so uh, generous with your contributions. Reaching the bottom. <laughs> I just want to thank everyone. Thank you, Jen, for your contribution. Really appreciate it. You know, I, I see these questions and I almost can't resist, but now I have to wrap it up because you guys have to leave. And the numbers of people here are still going up, so I guess we're getting the people who were night owls. Thank you, John, for your contribution. Really appreciate it. Uh, and there you are. We're at the bottom. Daniel Griffin's email, daniel at microbe.tv. All right, folks. Thank you again for joining us. Really appreciate it. Come back next week with your questions that were unanswered. And thank you all for coming. Thank you for your questions and thank you for your contributions. Be safe and we'll see you next time. Good night, everybody.